Washington, CNN, President Barack Obama is girding for battle with Congress, this time, with the resistance coming from his own party, over a fast-track bill that greases the wheels for one of the biggest free trade deals in history. The Trans-Pacific Partnership means major changes to the U.S. economy, some positive, some painful. But with Democrats already at war with each other, and dozens of other thorny issues tied to the deal on the horizon, this fight is also going to extend into 2016 election season, guaranteeing it a prominent place in the political debate for the next 20 months. Here are six reasons you should drop everything and read about the trade war. The deal is absolutely massive. You thought the North American Free Trade Agreement was big? Try this on for size, the United States, Canada and Mexico are involved, but so are nine other Asia-Pacific countries, including Japan, the market American businesses really want to break into. Combined, they make up 40% of the world's economy. And if the deal is implemented, it could change everything from where your shoes and shirts are made to where U.S. car companies, pharmaceutical drug makers and the energy industry sell their products. That's why the biggest U.S. business groups, like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the Business Roundtable and the National Association of Manufacturers, are lobbying so hard for the deal. It forces us to grapple with really tough questions. Should it be harder for poor countries like Malaysia to make generic versions of expensive drugs patented by U.S. pharmaceutical companies? Should Japan's small family farmers be forced to abandon their heritage and compete with industrial American farms' products? Why make a deal that allows Vietnam, with all its child labor abuses, sell more shoes and t-shirts into the United States? These are all issues that the deal's critics raise. Its proponents, though, point out that American businesses are currently closed out of huge markets. The deal would create new openings to sell agricultural products, natural gas, cars and more into Japan's developed economy, and Australia's, and New Zealand's. It would include labor and environmental protections that were missing from NAFTA. And it would give the United States a foot in the door with a host of developing countries. Proponents ask, how can those opportunities be turned away? Really, this is about China. Remember Obama's infamous Asia pivot, the one Hillary Clinton was spearheading as Secretary of State? This deal is its economic underpinning. China isn't involved in the Trans-Pacific Partnership. But it is working on its own trade deal in the region, with many of the same countries. And that deal won't include the labor and environmental language, or the crackdown on government-owned and operated businesses, or the Internet freedom language, that the United States is insisting on. Proponents say the deal is the United States' chance to install itself as an economic force in the region, and to require some of the participating countries to play by its rules. The alternative is that those countries could fall increasingly into China's orbit. It's turned Democrats against each other. This is unusual, Obama's with Republicans on one side, and Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren is leading a Democratic rebellion on the other. Labor unions, environmental groups and consumer advocacy organizations are hoping to thwart the deal, with the AFL-CIO halting its contributions to Democratic candidates to pump its resources into this fight.